नमस्ते आश्रय में यहाँ बोध गया में माँ तारा का मंदिर यहाँ पहुँच गया हूँ और इसके अंदर का हम यूट्यूब का वीडियो थोड़ा बनेगा तो आप सब लोग यहीं से देख लीजिए इसका मतलब क्या है माँ तारा का मतलब क्या है और माँ तारा मतलब यहाँ यहाँ क्यों बनाया है इसका मतलब क्या है वह सब हम पूछेंगे गुरु से तो आप लोग देखते रहना कंटिन्यू Tashile Guruji. Oh, Tashile, I will give you a very short, short history of this temple. Uh, as you see, he is Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha is, of course, for the Buddhist world, not only for the Buddhists, for all the mankind. He is one of the great Lord who brought ahimsa. He taught only non-violence. And his teaching is very relevant even these days, especially in these days. So Buddhist teaching is wonderful. And of course, he was born in India and he got enlightenment here in Magadha. In the old time, during Buddhist time, there's nothing called Bihar. It is all Magadha. The place is called Magadha and Buddha is called Urvila in those days. So in the Urvila, under the people tree, Siddhartha got enlightenment and he became Buddha. And then the tree became Bodhi tree and the Urvila became Bodhi Gaya. So this is a very short uh, history. Uh, and when Buddhism was very uh, strong in, in, in India during the Gupta time, Magad time. The whole place is called Magadha. And the, at that time, the Magad kings were Chandraguptas, the, the Mauryan dynasty, very, uh, uh, one of the great, uh, the king of India, and of course Ashoka. Ashoka is called, the, uh, Ashoka is called Chakrava. Marty Maharaj, one of the great emperor. And during the time of Ashoka, India enjoys the golden period. The golden history of India is during the time of Gupta time. At that time, the Buddhism was very active in this place, in Magadha. 
and in the seventh century, end of the seventh century, the Buddhism from Bhagat, from Nalinda, it went to Tibet. So this, this, if you look at this photos, you see three stands. The right side is the king of Tibet in the eighth century, and he invited, he invited these two great saints from India. The left side is called Shantaraksita. Shantaraksita is a great, one of the great scholars saint of Nalinda in the eighth century and the king invited him to Tibet. So because of Shantirachita, Patna Sambhava, Patna Sambhava comes from Northern India, it's come. We call him the great saint of Northern India, but now it falls in Pakistan, a place called Swat. He was born in Swat in Northern India, Pakistan, uh, now, now Pakistan. So the king invited these two great saints from India, and Buddhism flourished in Tibet in the later part of the 7th century. So these three others are very, very important for, for Buddhism in Tibet, not only Tibet, all over Himalaya became very active. So after Lord Buddha, for the Himalayan people, for Tibetan people, these three idols are very, very uh, important. Because of these three, the king and the two saints, Buddhism flourished in Tibet when Buddhism went down in India. And there was a lot of like invasion in India. You know, so the Buddhism was completely, uh, completely vanished in India. But it went to Tibet, became very active because of these three clusters. Besides the uh, Buddha statue, there's always some uh, altar. The, in the middle one is our root Guruji, Tokse Rinpoche, a great teacher who came from Tibet and then set it after the invasion of Tibet and set it down in Darjeeling. And he is our root guru, a very, very great master. And then his son is Jangon Rupa, then we have, of course, the, the Lord, yeah, His the Holiness, the Dalai Lama. And then this one is the Rinpoche who established this temple. Tiarawa Rinpoche, a very young, very active, and he has a lot of good feelings for the people in Magad or Bihar. And through him, we have started a lot of humanitarian projects okay. in Bihar. Okay. When did he build this temple? 19, 2015 we started okay. and 2019 uh, we have inaugurated this temple. So it took, it took just almost four years to complete this temple. And this temple is named Tara Devi Temple because the, we have in Bodh Gaya more than 76 monasteries, okay. Thai monasteries, Vietnamese monasteries, Tibetan monasteries, mm -hmm. and most of the monasteries, of course, there's a stage of Lord Buddha. Yeah. But they all look same. So we thought, because the Magadha mm -hmm. is a very important place of Tara Devi, so we should build a, a temple dedicated to Tara Devi. And Tara Devi in the 7th century was worshipped by the people of Magadha. And in, in Hindi, we, 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 they say Magadka Devi, Tara Devi, Magadka Devi. Okay. Magad, Magad is the center in the so one of her, the very... Her name was Tara Devi? Tara, Tara Devi, yes. Uh, Tara, Tara uh, Devi. Okay. Tara Devi has a long, 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 long lineage history. But she is actively involved actively worshipped by people of Magadha, especially in the 7th century, 8th century, 9th century. And then when the Buddhism went down in the 11th century, it became very popular in Tibet and all the way in the Himalayan region. So everywhere you go, you will see Tara Devi temple, Tara Devi idols. Been in now Pakistan and Afghanistan, went to do a lot of excavation.
find a lot of beautiful stations of Tara Devi. So Tara Devi is very popular. In, in so people's mm. Devi is Tara Devi. Look at Devi, Tara Devi, mm. DC. Okay. You know, Tara Devi is widely worshipped. Mm. If you go to many, many small temples in nearby Bo Bodh Gaya, in the village, you will see a lot of old temples, Tara Devi, but mm. of course all broken, mm. destroyed. You know, so Tara Devi is very much worshipped. Mm. And she is the, the, the most beloved. Mm. And people say is Lo Priya Devi in the 8th century. Lo Priya Devi mm. means she is loved, she mm. is worshipped by people of Magadha. Can you give her a short bio about her, her life? Uh, that long, long, long history, she was an ordinary princess, but with a lot of, lot of, lot of kind heart, very high. She sacrificed her life for the sake of the people, mm. and she worshipped the deities. And then her name was uh, uh, Gyan Devi, Gyan Chandra Devi, something like in, the, in the low, long time. But the Tibetan people, people will call her in those many, many, many years. But Yeshidawa, yes. and then she was when she became very active. She was she was known as the Tara, Tara, one who is very prompt in answering your request, your uh, your answer, all your suffering. When the people have kind of emotional suffering, physical suffering, mm -hmm. people in the 8th century, 9th century, they worship the Tara, and their prayers were answered very fast. Mm -hmm. So she is called the Devi who will answer your request very fast. Mm -hmm. You said she is coming from a very long, long lineage. Long, 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 long like time. How many incarnations? Long, long, oh, no, no, no incarnation. It's, we believe that this is the time of Lord Buddha who is born in Shakya family. Okay. But before that, there are many Buddhas. Mm -hmm. And this is the time of Shakyamuni Buddha. And after many, many thousands of years, there will be another Buddha who is called Maitreya mm -hmm. Buddha. And before that, there were also Buddhas. Mm -hmm. So in one of these times, she became a, uh, she was a princess of our royal family. Mm -hmm. And, but she was a very, very, she lives very ordinary, mm -hmm. served people, mm -hmm. and then she was born as a Tara Devi. Mm -hmm. So Tara it, Devi. It was she one of the very first uh, female Buddha who became enlightened? Bodhisattva was. Yeah. Bodhisattva was. Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva was not completely what we call Buddha, but Bodhisattva was uh, the people who promised that they will live with the people okay. until everyone becomes Buddha mm -hmm. or enlightened. Okay. Uh, people worship Durga more. In when you Thailand. go to. Uh, no, 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 no. When you go to in India, different state, worship different kind of deities. Yeah. If you go to Bombay, people worship Ganesh more. If you go to Bengal, people worship Durga Mall. If you go to another places, people worship another deities, you know? Yeah. All the same form, but worship in different manifestations. I have 21 statues of Tara here. Out of 21 statues, 20 statues are made from best marble. These marbles are bought from Rajasthan and made in Bhubaneswar, which is the capital of Urissa. And there were two sculptures who are very, very, very good in making different statues. So made, they made these statues of Tara. And they were awarded Padma Shri by the president of India mm. for their wonderful work. So they made these statues for our temple and it took us a more than three years to complete so each tara weighs 740 kgs 740. Uh, 740 is very heavy so since tara was from india we have the names of tara each tara in sanskrit and then tibetan and in tibetan The practice of Tara, how to chant mantra of Tara, the teaching on Tara, it's all in Sanskrit, uh, but translated in Tibetan. And
and there are many traditions of Nara. Uh, so when Buddhism came to India, uh, to Tibet, Tibetan people worship Tara and Avalokiteshvara, Ari Avalokiteshvara very much. Ar Ari Avalokiteshvara is called Avaluk it's called Padma, Pani, Jagannath, in different names in India. But he is one of the Bodhisattva. And so Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara, Tara Devi, very much worship in Tibet. So almost all the monasteries in Tibet, every Tibetan people will know Tara Devi's prayer, Tara Devi's mantra, mantra of Avalokiteshvara, and then some prayers of Avalokiteshvara. And His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, is the emanation of Avalokiteshvara, the Buddha of compassion, compassion, Karuna Gadeva. So He is Avalokiteshvara in person. So these are the different Taras. Every Tara has many, many stories. It comes from 7th century, 9th century, 11th century. But if someone is interested, if they study Tara Tantra, Tara Tantra and some of the very important teachings by uh, Kumar Gupta, one of the very great saint, Pandit who was born in Srinagar. In those days, Magad is what a very important Buddhist tantric place, Srinagar, Kashmir, very important place. And there was a great Pandit who was called Kumara Gupta. Kumara Gupta was a very great scholar, especially specialized on Tara's teaching. So many of his teaching, the, the statues, the gestures, the mudras were way back according to his tradition. We have seen 11 statues of Tara below. Now we have eight statues of Tara here on this, this, on this floor. I think all these star stages are beautifully made. He made it very, very beautiful. So these are the wealth of India, a culture of Magad that we have preserved. Because Tara Devi is very, very, very important everywhere in the world, but especially this place called Magad. 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 Magad is in the heart of all the people in Buddhist world. Mm -hmm. Because when we were young, when we study about Buddhism, they always mentioned about Magad. Mm -hmm. In this Magad, a great person came. In Magad, this great scholar came. Mm -hmm. In Magad, one of these great yogi came. So Magad is a story of rich culture. Okay. And great scholars, great pundits, mm -hmm. and great yogis. So it's the heart of Indian culture, actually. Yeah. And especially 7th century, 8th century, 9th century. Gupta times. You know, in the old times, Patna is called Patliputra. And then the whole Bihar is called Magad. Mm -hmm. Magad. So very rich culture. The rich culture that India is very proud of. It is here in Magad. Of course, Antara Devi is the, the Devi of Magad. Magad Kadevi. Uh, why do we call her Tara Devi? Tara is a, is a name. It, it has a lot of like connotation. It, I think uh, uh, Tara is a Sanskrit word. Hmm. Tarin, Tara, Tarin in grammatical, if we say Tarin means prompt, fast, one who answers, one, one who gives you very fast and health. Okay. You know, it's called Tarin. So it's, it's a Sanskrit word.
This is the mandal of Chakra Samvara. Chakra Samvara is a Buddhist tantric deity. And then it's just uh, one of the very great masters in the 11th century. Uh, came many many great scholars came from Tibet to India to study Sanskrit and to receive different kind of teaching. Among these great uh, scholars there's one called Marpa who came to India, learned Sanskrit, studied in Vikramashila, translated many many books from Sanskrit to Tibetan and he met the great Narupa, one of the great abbot of Nalanda University and Maitreya and many many great pundits and yogis he met. From these yogis he received the teaching Chakra Samara, Hevaraj, uh, like his many many of tantric teachings and then he brought back to Tibet and then started to preach these teachings in 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 Tibet and uh, Tibetan Buddhist world, like Mongolia, in China, in Japan. So, uh, it's a deity, it's a very high uh, deity and it has a lot of like different explanation, inner explanation, outer explanation, secret explanation, because these are tantric and Buddhist tantric. Buddhist, Buddhist Tantra is supposed to be a little bit secret, but secret doesn't mean that they don't want to reveal to people. It doesn't mean like that. It should be taught to the people who understand that level. You know, if you are a small child, you cannot talk, teach the small child about Shakespeare's poem. It's no use. So like that. So when you are in that level, they teach about the Tantric. Uh, Tantric deals a lot about in people's mental science, about the emotion. Very, very profound, very, very detailed, and very, very rich philosophy, actually. But once, if you want to study about, want to study about this chakra samara, akal chakra, then you have to receive proper teaching from a good guru. Teaching first, and then you have to receive initiation and then you can practice. But without proper teaching, initiation, we don't read books and study and practice. Not like that. It has to be oral transmission. And many of these teachings are called, in the old time, called the air whisper. Air yeah. whisper means a teacher gives to a student uh, in his ear that is not misunderstood by people. Because there are many tantric uh, philosophy has a different meaning at a different level. Uh, sometimes people will misinterpret, sometimes people will misunderstand. So it's very important that you have to learn tantric teachings step by step. And in Tibet, we have Mount Kailash. Mount Kailash is supposed to be very sacred. So, we believe that Chakra Samara reside in Mount Kailash. The Hindu will say Lord Shiva is residing there. The Buddhist says that Chakra Samara resides there. And that's one of his sacred place where he will reside. But of course, for a practitioner, he resides in the mind of all the people. We have one more, one more on top. <laughs> the statue is made from fiber. 
made from fiber in Siliguri. In Siliguri. And this is the last Tara. And she is the combination of all the 21 Tara. Very active, very active. Usually people call her green Tara because her color, because the skin color is a little bit green. But her real name is this one. In Sanskrit, Sanskrit. 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 Sansk
how do you deal with your mind? Did all these different gestures, all these different kind of teachings is to deal with your mind. I think that's enough. Thank you. <laughs> you see, they put the main temple there, no? Yeah. Main temple. And then this is uh, Derga uh, Minjirimichi Monastery. Minjirimichi is a very young lama, very interesting, very good lama. And he teaches, oh, he teaches on meditation all the time. And he wrote a very wonderful book called In Love with the World. And he disappeared from this temple. And for four years and a half, he disappeared everywhere in the Himalaya and he just behaved like a beggar and unidentified by people and he went to different hills, the mountain in the Himalaya, practiced meditation. And then people were looking for him for four years and a half. He completely disappeared, behaved like, an, uh, like a yogi but beggar. And he's from this temple, Minjurumichi. Very interesting lama. Now he teaches only meditation, how to meditate, how to meditate. Very famous in the world. And his books are wonderful, very wonderful book. You must read his book. Shito is a Tibetan term which means peaceful and rightful. Uh, this uh, sort of like teaching, it just came from a great Zen, Padma Sambhava. Padma Sambhava was born in, this, uh, in the early uh, period in the 7th century. He was from a great Zen from northern India. Were, in those days is called Northern India, but now it falls in Pakistan in a place called Sot. So he was invited to Tibet in order to uh, establish Buddhism in Tibet. And the nature of Tibetan people were quite aggressive uh, because uh, um, we have another kind of religion in Tibet called Burn religion. So Vern religion is, uh, it worships the natural, it, it's, it also uh, worships in the animal sacrifice also. So that um, Tibetan people were naturally not very gentle in those days. So Padma Sambo, uh, with from Nalinda Shantirachara was invited to Tibet. He taught uh, Buddhism in Tibet, uh, since the Tibetan people were still very aggressive in nature, so Padma Sambo was invited from Tibet. So he is a tantric teacher who has a lot of power uh, and he gave a lot of teachings and some of his teachings well, well, uh, hidden in different parts of Tibet in here yeah, and also in the Himalayas. And he said after my passing away, there will be a lot of great yogi saints who will bear the name of Lingpas. And one of these name bearing Lingpa Karma, Lingpa will appear and he will reveal my teaching to the people. So in the 11th century, a yogi called Kamalingpa revealed Padma Sampapa's teaching and his uh, very important student, uh, Garawa, also uh, spread the teaching of Shito, this teaching to, to the people of Tibet and all over in the Himalayan region. So Shiro is a very complex teaching. It talks about the emotion of the people, 
what you see here is not exactly what it means. It, 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 it most, most many of them are symbolic, many, many symbolic things. And for this sort of like teachings, I think you have to go very, very detailed. It just, it talks about the whole cosmos, the whole cosmos, the outer, the inner cosmos, the emotion with the people. And usually what happens when you are on the verge of dying? So this teaching, it tells about the human psychology. And uh, there's a Tibetan book called Tibetan Book of the Dead. It's a very, very, very um, a classic book. 1952, a German scholar called Professor Herbert Günther translated this text from Tibetan to English. But when you read the text, it's very difficult to understand because it's a very classic and, and the terms are, are very unfamiliar with the people. So, uh, another great uh, teacher, Trungpa uh, Rinpoche, Sokyal Rinpoche, they simplified this teaching. And then the book is, in English, the book is called Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. And this book has become very, very popular. It's one of the best sellers in the New York Times. So, those people who cannot read Tibetan scriptures, on the teaching of this Shito, they can also read this book, Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, and then one can understand what is the, uh, the literal meaning, what's the symbolic meaning, what's the ultimate meaning of all this mandal in this book. And the great uh, the, uh, Hollywood movie star Richard Gale was reading this book, so you can also listen uh, on what you call this uh, YouTube. Huh? YouTube. Uh, not exactly YouTube, but you can also e readings. You know? oh, okay. You can e just read. You can just read. He will narrate, and you can just listen to his narration. Okay. And it's very. It's quite quite simple to understand that in English. Mm. Those people. Yes. Those people who can don't understand Tibetan language scriptures, they can read this in English. So this is a very interesting teaching also. And very, very complex. Most of the Buddhist Tantra teachings are very, very very, very profound, complex. Uh, it has a lot of different meaning. Sometimes uh, Buddhist teachings are not commonly revealed to the people when Buddha was alive because there is a great danger that it can, uh, people can misunderstand, people can misunderstand. In Japan it happened 10 years ago. Uh, some of the disciples they misunderstood some text from a uh, very important text in Sanskrit is called Sadhama Pundarika. From Sadhama Pundarika, some of the lines they misunderstood, mispracticed, and it, it became very, very, very dangerous. So tantric teachings are not revealed openly to the people, even during the time of Buddha. So it has, uh, one has to one has to study very carefully, literally what it means, what is the symbolic um, the explanation, and what is the real ultimate meaning behind the literal meaning and what we see here. It's very profound. Thank you. Guruji, what you said about water and flowers? Uh, in, in India, the, in the old time, when you go to Mandir, 
when you go to t any kind of temple, when you uh, worship, when you worship uh, Deva Devi's statues like this, it's very, very nice to offer flower and then the water. These are very good offering it's because the flower is symbolized purity, the good nature, the water symbolized the abundance and what is the most necessary for any kind of sentient being, not only human being, all sentient being. So the water offering, flower offering, these are very good offering. Then pushing points on the finger, <laughs> these are not very nice actually. Flower, this rose trees, also people like, usually uh, whatever you feel good and whatever you have uh, is good to offer actually. So people, you know, I think someone must have taken the mala from the neck and then this they offer to Tara. It's also good. It also shows that your, your purity of mind and respect to Devi. But the good thing is to offer a flower. And when people worship, actually they should worship they should touch their forehead to the feet of Devi or Deva or to your Guru. When we say, when we do bow down to our teachers, we touch his feet because the feet is the bottom of your physical and the forehead is one of the most important part of yourself. So, when you touch to the feet of your teacher, your guru, that means to you who is absolute, who is high, who is ultimate. I touch, I touch to your, to, to the lowest part of your body, which is still very, very ultimate, high for me. So that's a very good surrender. Surrender. When you see Deva Devi Gurus, you must surrender. Yeah. Surrender means you have to surrender with 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 you. You have to uh, uh, you have to make your ego less. When you surrender to the feet, that means it's good that you uh, you have less ego. Yeah, you have submitted. Yes, yes, you have submitted. Usually, most of the people have a lot of ego. They think they are something. So usually when they touch the feet that you surrender to him and you s submit your e uh, ego and, and your salutation is a very good part. And when we, we have ego, then we say it's like throwing a grain on this grenade or marble. Hmm. If you throw a grain, on this marble, which is very hard, it will not stay. It will just sparkle. Yeah. You know. So when you come with a big ego, nothing, no knowledge will go inside, because you have so much ego. It's like your your cup is full with ego. So no knowledge, no wisdom will come to you because of your ego. You know. So when you surrender, it's a very nice way to receive knowledge.